side. They're announcing the first Dallas goal right now, Neil Broughton's goal. His first of the season, assisted by number 17, Mike McPhee, time of goal 351. Mike McPhee getting that assist at 351. And we Second should be hearing Madonna's now. scoring at 422. Well, hello everyone. I'm Sam Valenti and I have the honor today of speaking with a true pioneer and legend in the world of sports media, the first ever female public address announcer in National Hockey League history for my beloved Dallas Stars, Sari Zalison. Sari, like I said, it's just an absolute honor to be talking with you. Well, Sam, I just love that you reached out to me and it's always nice to be, re you know, reminded that people are still out there and still remember that it was a pretty cool thing to do. Hey, it sure was, you know, and you've had such a long career in the world of media and communications. I'm curious, how and when did you first get interested in that field? Um, into sports you're talking about? Uh, I, 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 honestly, just media in general. You know. Oh, okay. Um, so, and really this kind of led to me being the announcer, honestly, is that I used to be a competitive figure skater. So when I was growing up, I spent my life <laughs> in an ice rink. So, you know, most kids went to camp or had a break in the summer. No, I skated all the time. Um, but I got to be really friendly and most of my friends were hockey players because when you spend most of the time in the ice rink with people, that's what ends up happening. But you understand what the blue line is and the red line is. And, you know, I dated hockey players. So, I mean, it just all goes back to really my youth. Um, and then taking that into broadcasting. So um, because I was a competitive figure skater, I wanted to cover sports. So that was kind of like the push into going into broadcasting. Um, but then I was told things like, you need to get your chops. You've got to go and you know, fall on your face a little bit, you've got to go out there and test yourself and, you know, really go back to the roots of, you know, what, what is it? And it's really your voice. So what it comes down to, whether you're doing sports or television or radio, it's all your voice. So um, really got trained in how to talk, not necessarily to people, because when you're on the radio, you're talking to people you think you are. Um, but, you know, just really interesting in the way that you can, really take yourself and your mind and create, let's say, theater of the mind, because that's what we basically call radio. Um, and I did radio for quite a long time. And it really gave me the, um, you know, it, it gave me the chops, like we're talking about, to move on in, in the career. And then, of course, do several things in radio. Well, wow, that's awesome. I didn't know about the figure skating part. That's so cool. Well, it kind of makes sense because it ties in like my media background with a sports background. So, you know, the understanding of the sport, a lot of, you know, the calls I was used to, like I grew up, you know, when I was little, my dad used to take me to the hockey games. My brother didn't really appreciate it, um, but I did. So he used to take me and that's kind of how I learned who the players were, um, you know, what offsides was you know, what the calls were and things like that. But then, of course, you know, gaining all that knowledge actually working for the NHL. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm curious, what, what was your favorite NHL team, uh, you know, before the Stars? <laughs> it's the Red Wings. <laughs> I'm from Detroit. I mean, Yeah, I, you know, figure, I figured. <laughs> you knew kind of that was coming. <laughs> and, and actually, I don't know if you know this, but like the management, who was Jeff Kogan and Jim Lights from the Red Wings, came down to start the Stars. Yeah, yeah, they did. You're right. So it was kind of all that connection from going back to working in radio again, um, meeting people, doing promotions, you know, things like that. I mean, we all know in this business, it's about relationships and keeping good relationships. And, um, you know, that was very important to me. So it ended up paying off. Hey, hey, it sure did. Now, you came to Dallas in the early 90s to work for KZPS 92.5, you know, when he come when he came to Texas, what were your first impressions, you know, of the city, of the state and everything? It's very funny you ask that. So I crossed the the Texas line, you know, um, coming into Texas, and I was like, Oh, this is not like the Midwest. Um, <laughs> it was it was <laughs> it was different, you know. Um, I mean, people were really nice, and I was like, What is going on? Um, 
but I was really, I love the climate. I loved the people that I met. I will tell you that some of my best friends are still in Dallas um, because it became like a home to me. I was there for five years um, until of course I moved on with my career. Um, but it was a good five years and, you know, and very successful five years for me. Well, that, Hey, that's great to hear. I know I'm always, I'm always glad to hear people who, uh, who like the big D. So that makes me happy. Um, wh when did the stars, you know, first contact you for that PA announcer position and, you know, what was your reaction? What, what was going on in your mind? You know, just, you know, what was going on? So the way that it actually happened was, is that Jeff Kogan was a friend of mine and we went out for lunch one day and he said, you know, I want to do some kind of like entertainment in the ice rink. And, I'm, and he knew I used to be a figure skater. So he said, can you, you know, maybe manage that or organize that? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I'd be happy to do that for you. And, and then a couple of days later, he called me back and he said, Hey, we're looking for an announcer for the team. Will you audition? And I'm like, yeah, I really didn't understand what that meant or what it was going to be, or I didn't understand any of it, but he said, just come and show up at the ice rink. And, and, I, and Norm Green was there because he was the owner of the team at the time. And, um, and Mike Badano and I are hometown, like Detroit buddies. Mm -hmm. So he kind of, you know, put in a good word for me. Um, and we had been good friends for a while. So um, it just turned out that they brought me into the rink and they put a microphone in the middle of where the ice would have been, because I don't know if you know this, there was no ice there because there was no oh, team. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so hello. Um so it um, it ended up that they just put a, you know, a microphone in the middle of the cement. Um, there were some people that were putting in chairs, like, you know, installing chairs, I think, at the time. Um, and then they said, just, you know, do something, say, like, scoring, number nine, Mike Madonna. And I'm like, okay. Um, and then they made me do, like, a couple other things. And, you know, the people in the stands were like, woohoo, you know, <laughs> it almost felt like it was a hockey game, but it wasn't a hockey game. Um, and, and then they hired me. So after that, it was kind of just like everything exploded. Um, you know, making national history was a little bit different because everybody was calling me. So I did interviews in Canada and I did interviews all over the United States. Um, the biggest comparison of that time was that there was another woman who was doing baseball play, you know, um, same kind of thing, PA announcer. And she was the first ever to do that as a woman. So like we kind of connected and her name was Sherry and we talked and, you know, she gave me some inspiration and stuff because it, it was not easy at first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I bet. But like, you know, I'm curious, you know, look, looking back at those days now, you, you know, you know, what's it like knowing that you were such uh, such a pioneer in, in, in really in, in the field of, you know, announcing? It was, um, you know, it, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, this happened. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I want this because it wasn't there. So, you know, it just kind of came upon me and what happened, you know, within the course of doing 56 games and NHL playoffs and meeting the extraordinary people that I met and, you know, people that sat next to me and it, it was, you know, super cool. But because I had been a radio talent, because I was looked at as, you know, more of a, let's say, celebrity and a market being in radio it was, you know, kind of, it was normal, but it was a little bit outside of what I had ever known just because I had never talked to all these people about me. <laughs> now I've, I've asked this, what were some of your favorite memories, you know, favorite like specific memories of being the voice of stars games at reunion arena? Well, I think it was cool to see other teams that I admired, like the Toronto Maple Leafs. I really like the, you know, the Red Wings. I really like to see other teams come in and play the stars I thought was amazing but you know it was just the whole experience was so cool like there was one time that we um so you also have to remember that this is the time of like expansion teams okay no. so although the stars were one of the first to you know be an expansion team there were others that were coming along the way um and like when I remember when Disney came in because you know we were playing 
California and they were, you know, they were coming in with all of their characters and stuff. And Donald Duck was on the ice and, you know, and then, the, you know, there were just amazing people that used to come into the ice rink like that, um, that I got to meet. So I just feel very blessed. I think it was so special. And, you know, the playoffs, I will say that was kind of like the cherry on top. Like if I was going to do all those games, the playoffs was pretty cool. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I believe I believe you were the announcer for the Canucks Star Series in a in, in, and, I, and I believe it was ninety four, and that was yeah. the playoffs. Yeah, and, and, and unfortunately, we uh, I don't th- we lost that year because the Canucks went right. to the final. But but yeah, like like what was it like getting to you know just speaking of that, what was it like getting to announce those playoff games? Because you obviously know how intense NHL playoff games are. Yeah, it is really intense. It's a lot of concentration. I mean, you really have to watch the game along with watching the clock. So you're doing two different things at the same time, always. Um, So it is. And then you have to back time it because, you know, if somebody made a play or something, you've got to know the timing in the clock. But that was a lot, you know, that's a lot to concentrate on and then watch the puck and watch the players and watch the ref. And there's a lot of stuff. So it's not, it it wasn't easy. I'm not telling you it was easy. There was, you know, but there were other components. Like there were people that would work with me so that they, if a goal and assist and, you know, I could, I could go to them for that kind of information if I didn't catch a play. So, you know, but it was those playoff games were like high intensity as all well. like that's the best way I can explain it. High intensity. I think that's a very good choice of words. Um, <laughs> n- n- now, obvi- obviously, today there are many more women in sports media and there are also more female PA announcers. So I know I just I just want to you know get your thoughts on this. How important is it that we're seeing these great increases? Oh, I just love it. You know, I, I mean, I admire all these women who step out of the box and say, I'm going to do it just like I did. You don't know what you're going to get as far as, you know, people reacting to you, but if you don't go do it yourself, who's going to do it for you? So I just, I'm so proud of all the women that have stepped out and said, if I could do this, anybody can do this. A human being can do this. So you know, I love that. I, there weren't that many opportunities when I did it. Um, and now I see so many more. And it's so encouraging because that gives you the opportunity to go anywhere and do anything. So I, I just think it's the best thing ever. Oh, for sure. And, and you know, I was I was looking at this online. I thought this was super cool because because after you left Dallas, you know, obviously you you stuck with, you know, your radio career and you're in your and you're and you kept on doing great work in that field. But you've also gotten film. You got, you got involved, I should say, with film and acting, which I think is super cool because I, I took a film class in high school. So, you know, how did you get into that, you know, and, and, and doing like acting and stuff? So, I mean, I was always a performer. I think you're born a performer. I don't know. That's just my opinion. But if you're a performer, you're a performer. So I always had that like innate ability to go out on the ice and, you know, go into competition and do a play and sing. And I always did stuff like that. I was always involved in very creative type of environments. So when I moved back to Detroit, so from Dallas, I went to Chicago at the Loop, which is a pretty well-known heritage rock station. It doesn't exist anymore. And then I was hired as the first um, programmer at first female programmer at XM Satellite Radio. So when I went to XM, I started the 70s channel and I was there for five years, but I also did a lot of red carpet. So I got to interview a lot of people. I got my interviewing skills really well done and really down. Um, But then I started to do some acting on the side. So like I signed to an agency when I was in Washington, D.C. And um, I was an extra in the Wedding Crashers. Oh, wow. That's so, awesome. I know. It's so funny. But I mean, unless you see it with me, you cannot see me um, <laughs> because you would never see me. But it was just an experience because I wanted to see what it was like. And then when XM and Sirius merged, there were two 70s channels. So it was like, am I going to stay or am I going to go? It was one of those things. And I had I had, had enough. I was ready to step down from radio and I moved to Detroit and then I signed to a talent agency. So it's kind of like I'm saying, it's kind of like I'm just like born like that. You know, I love being in front of the camera. 
I'm not shy. <laughs> and so I, you know, have had a lot of success with that. It was super cool. I worked with um, Steve Buscemi and I worked with Drew Barrymore and I worked with um, Faye Dunaway. Um, so yeah, I did about seven or eight films and it was really fun you know, just by chance, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I am signed to the agency. So I still do commercial work. I still do voiceover work. Um, it's just a fun thing for me. It's not a serious thing for me. I, it's just like a side, I call it like my side gig, uh, my fun money. Um, but, you know, that's just like kind of, it just went with the territory of, you know, of what I had done. Yeah, I, I have to ask, what was it like getting to be in Wedding Crashers? Because that's such a great movie. It was fun. It was really, it was really cool. But I was my first experience. But then when I got to actually act in films and act in commercials, I really saw what, you know, gosh, a long day it is. It's a long day. Yeah. What, what would you say what was your favorite film production that they got to work on? Um, so I worked on Annabelle and Bear and it was a local Michigan movie. And that was super fun to work on. We filmed it in a house um, here in Detroit and and then I'm, I'm just trying to think what was I've, I worked on a couple of different things that I really liked. But Annabelle and Bear was super cool. Um, and then I was like an extra. I did some things, you know, like the Steve Buscemi thing was I can't even remember the name of some of the things I've done. That's really bad. That's, you know, I just like that's why I think it's just fun. <laughs> I just go do anything. Um but yeah, I mean, you know, there was a film incentive here for a while. That's why a lot of us got involved in film here in Michigan. Um, there isn't the film incentive anymore, kind of like moved to Atlanta. So we don't have as much as, uh, of that anymore, but it was fun. Well, well, hey, that's awesome to hear, you know, you know and, and, and I and because I, I because I was in film class and and I really enjoy doing the acting stuff. So so I, I'm with you right there. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you know, you know, also, honestly, for just anyone, you know, who, who would be like watching this, you know, would you mind going into detail just about, you know, what stuff you've been up to recently and stuff, you know, in Michigan? Yeah, absolutely. So um, most recently, I've been working at a mobile app development company. So I was actually developing strategy for radio companies to go to mobile and use digital. Um, I am in the process of taking a new job <laughs> that kind of has a lot to do with that, too but it is technology, it's in web, it's in mobile, but it's also in digital tools to help salespeople in radio stations. So it's still that connection of radio, um, but I'm looking to build it outside of radio as well. Oh, hey, well, that's awesome. That's, hey, that's really fantastic to hear. And hey, congratulations on that new job. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I love challenges and here's another one. A, a, a definitely for sure you hey you take that stuff to just head on and that's awesome uh what what is one piece of advice that you have for people who are looking to get into the world you know of sports media um don't take no for an answer that's hey. a really that's really a you know i mean don't be discouraged with a no there's you, you've got to get in with a yes somewhere like i i just feel that if you want it badly enough you'll go get it it, it's just as simple as that. You can't wait for other people to do things for you. And I mean, my dad used to always say, like, if you don't ask, you never know. Hello. And there's been plenty of times that I've asked for jobs or asked if there was a position or how can I do this by actually approaching a, pe a person that does it. And I think that that's like the best advice. It's just you've got to get I put yourself out there. Don't be afraid, you know, fearless is a good thing. Um, and then just be okay if you make mistakes. Hey, I think that is some fantastic advice. Um, you, you know, I do have to ask this, you, you know, do you just, would you have just any last messages for any Stars fans who might be watching this? Oh God, I just had the best time of my life there. I really did. It was just superb. And you're blessed to have a team like that. Um, it was, you know, I worked during the, you know, old time days with, you know, Craig Ludwig and Mike Madonna mm -hmm. and Shane Sherla and, you know, um, but, and Darian and, you know, but like, yeah, it was just such a special moment in time being a part of something that was new to Dallas. And 
I think it brought just this huge energy and, um, and I was really excited to be a part of it. So I just, I just very blessed about that. Well, well, Hey, um, you know, thank you so much for, for, for obviously being the first PA announcer that we had and just doing a fantastic job and, and really, you know, like, and like I've said before, you know, being a, a pioneer in the field for and inspiring, you, you know, more females to get involved in the world of sports media. So what you've done in your career is fantastic. And I just want to thank you so much. Sam, you're just a doll and it's just been a treat (laughs) talking to you. And I just want you to know if you ever need anything, you reach out to me because you know that I'll be there for you. (laughs) So best of luck, but anything I can do, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. Of of course. Hey, thank you so much again, Sari. Thank you so much for, for joining me here. And, you know, obviously, you know, Good luck with, with all the stuff you're doing you're doing now. Good luck with the stuff they're doing in the future because you're still working. You're still doing a lot of stuff, and that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much, and best of luck to you too. Well, hey, thank, thank you so much. I appreciate it.